Hey, what's up YouTube? Another day here in the shop. Let's see what we're working on today. Okay guys, we've got this 76 model uh, CJ7. Uh, this one actually has the 304 uh, AMC V8 in it. Uh, actually uh, makes quite a bit of power for a little lightweight Jeep. Uh, just put a new aluminum radiator in it. Uh, looking for some improved cooling, but also uh, the original old brass unit. Uh, the cores in it were kind of corroded up and stopped up, and we really want to prep this thing for the summer. Uh, you can see it's got an aftermarket transmission cooler on it as well, as, because this is an automatic uh, transmission. Uh, we're working on the brakes right now. Uh, the customer himself uh, converted it to disc in the front, and uh, looks like we've got a master cylinder that's leaking, so we've got a new part on order. Uh, it's supposed to be here today. Uh, we also, while we had it in the shop, went ahead and put uh, a two and a half inch Rough Country uh, lift kit. Uh, the old springs had de-arched and were sagging, and of course now this gets all you know all the new bushings in the in the shackles and in the frame and the leaf springs. So, uh, real freshen up on the suspension. Uh, obviously, gets new shocks. Uh, did that front and rear. Uh, so definitely uh, added some clearance, uh, ground clearance to the Jeep, and uh, it's going to give it overall a, a better stance and a better ride with that uh, correct new functioning suspension. Uh, we'll get that master cylinder in today and we'll get this one buttoned up and back to the customer. It's been a project that's been here a couple of weeks and I'm sure he's ready to get it back. Guys, the Willis is all but done. I actually got the Willis together this week, buttoned up a few last minute things. Uh, this thing runs like a sewing machine. Obviously, the wheels and tires that are on it here are just standing there for the for looks. Uh, the original old school aluminum uh, wheels that were on it, uh, the tires were probably 20 plus years old, uh, maybe maybe even older than that. Uh, They're extremely dry rotted, not safe to be driven on. Uh, so the customers ordered some new tires. Uh, so I've got it sitting on jack stands. So as soon as those tires get here, we can get that thing uh, get those new tires mounted up and get that thing out of here. Uh, it's been a project that's been here for a while and uh, we've reached the end of what we're going to be doing to it. I think after here it's going to go to uh, some paint and body work. It's got a dent in the roof uh, that the customer's pretty concerned about so we'll worry about getting that dent uh, out of the roof and uh, I'm not sure what he's going to do as far as paint and body. The, the truck actually has very little rust. Uh, it came from New Mexico uh, so it should be a uh, a decent one to, to put back together. He's not going for a total restoration. Uh, he just wants something that looks good and, uh, you know, easy to drive around and enjoy, but not uh, be so afraid of it that he would, uh, you know, fear scratching it. It's an old flathead uh, inline six. Of course, we put a new carburetor on it. Radiator hoses, thermostat. Uh, we did the rebuilt the distributor. Actually, had to take a set of modern points out of a modern car and take the points out of this one and kind of dissect them both and put them together to make the uh, the old school points have new guts. Uh, so we did that, put a new set of plugs in it. Um, it's kind of a, uh, a look, but down there, the brake lines are in the floor, the master cylinder's under the floor. So we did, like I said, we converted this to disc brakes in one of the earlier uh, videos and uh, also put new rear brakes on it, all internals, all brake lines, all internal parts, wheel cylinders, fuel lines, everything. Uh, got this thing ready to button up with these new wheels and tires and uh, take it to the next chapter of its uh, you know, semi-restoration. Get this thing back on the road and let the guy enjoy it. I know it's raining outside, but we just finished up uh, this little S10 today. Uh, we don't normally do these, but uh, a best friend of mine that passed away a couple of years ago, uh, unfortunately in a, in a home garage accident, uh, th this truck was bought for his son and his son was driving it for quite a, quite a time after uh, Jeff's passing and then it lost oil pressure. Uh, so we put a new 4.3 liter uh, V6 in it, had the transmission rebuilt while it was out and just kind of went through it and fixed a bunch of things. Uh, actually had to pull the bed off uh, today where a small rodent or squirrel or something had chewed through the uh, through the pressurized side of the fuel line right at the fuel pump. But we pulled the bed off, got that all corrected with AN fittings and uh, got this thing back together. Uh, it's got about three miles on it since the uh, assembly of all the new Prox uh, products, uh, engines, transmission and everything. And uh, looking forward to getting that break in mile oil change done and letting the, letting the boy go out and have some fun with it. 
All right, guys, got this uh, TJ ready ready to be picked up. Uh, a couple of things we had to fix with this. Uh, a previous uh, appointment at a different shop uh, was some work was done to this Jeep and a uh, customer just wasn't happy with it when he picked it up. He spent a lot of money there uh, having the, the lift kit and everything put on it. And uh, when it came to me, we found some gaps. Uh, so we did what we could do to fix those gaps. In fact, the, the rear body mount bushings uh, right there at the, the back bumper uh, were missing. Uh, I guess from where they put the rear bumper on it, I'm not even sure why they would have had those off, but uh, those body bushings were completely missing. Some of the suspension underneath wasn't, uh, wasn't dialed in exactly like it should have been. It is a four inch rough country kit with a long arm, but the, the geometry was off on some of the control arms. Uh, the exhaust, they left the fa uh, factory muffler on it, which hit the control arm. So we reworked the exhaust, uh, had a new windshield put in it. Uh, it had a busted uh, spot in a windshield. Imagine that with a Jeep, uh, but had a new windshield put in it and uh, kind of did a once over of the whole Jeep, got it ready to go. So the, now when the customer comes and picks it up from this shop, he should drive home happy. I've always been under the school of thought that you work hard you work hard every day. Even when you don't feel like going to work, you work hard every day and you take care of your family. But what's left over, you spend on toys. So guys, I bought me another toy. I now have a 71 Super Beetle. Uh, I've always loved these cars. Uh, I've owned three of them in the past. I had a 66 Bug, I had a 72 Super Beetle, and then I had a 73 Bug that owned for about an hour uh, when I got home with it. My dad immediately bought that car from me and uh, it was my sister's first car through high school. Uh, this is a 70, 71 Super Beetle. Uh, this was originally an orange car. Uh, imagine that, me owning something orange. But uh, somebody has done some, some light haze primer work uh, over the years. Obviously it's gonna take a little work. Not looking to make this show a show car. Uh, really want to have this as a car that I can just bounce around town and enjoy. Um, did come with some some very interesting surprises. Uh, floor pans in the car are rock solid and rust free. Uh, you can see that stock orange paint there. Uh, already has an aftermarket MP shifter. Uh, of course, we're going to put some pro car bucket seats in it. Um, very, very pleased to see that the normal rust the normal rust these have up front uh, this one seems to be really solid couple of small pinholes but nothing that you would call rust on a, a 1971 model car uh, brand new fuel tank didn't wasn't aware of that when i before i went to go look at the car and all the customer could tell me about the engine is that she had had it built and once i got the car out on the first test drive i noticed it ran really well and uh then when she gave me the big stack of receipts, I see that it is now a 1915 cc uh, dual port uh, MP built Volkswagen engine. So it's an air-cooled 1915 cc engine should make right between 90 and 100 horsepower, uh, which is going to be uh, you know one and a half times, almost double what it did from the factory. Uh, so car runs out really well. Uh, I've got some planned improvements for it, but uh, overall I'm really excited about this toy and looking forward to uh, posting some updates on the page. It is lowered a lot in the rear. Uh, so to fix that, I'm gonna lower the front uh, way, way down. Uh, I really kinda, kinda want to drag the, drag the ground everywhere I go in this car because even with the big engine, uh, it's nowhere near, like for instance, the horsepower or the speed of the duster. Uh, it doesn't have extremely good handling, uh, but low and slow and loud uh, is still a lot of fun. So looking forward to this and uh, just be, uh, stay tuned for future updates and future videos on this car. Well, all right, guys, uh, as always, we you know certainly enjoy you guys tuning in and watching the videos. Uh, we encourage you to go to our Facebook page, Richter's Off-Road Performance. Uh, you'll see a lot more of the day-to-day uh, -day pictures of the projects that we work on and some, some deep dive photos of some of the repairs that we make. Uh, we encourage, uh, encourage that, and always remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Thanks.